I am a futurist. It's going to be very different. It's going to be lots of slides, but just pictures. Um, and I'm just back from India doing India 2030. Went from there to Geneva to work with the UN on 2030, but also the question of how will we decide what it means to be human or a person by 2030. And one of the things that struck me, and I'll show you her picture today, uh, there is an android robot n named Sophia. And I talked about Sophia as somebody who opened the UNDP conference, but what I learned when I was there, Sophia was just given citizenship by Saudi Arabia. So this is our first robot citizen. So let's start with um, in the workforce of the future, who are the ESIs? Just raise your hand with the answer. How many think they're extraterrestrial sensory individuals? Exceptional senior individuals? Enhanced singular individuals? You have to think something. Okay, keep your hands up if you're guessing. Okay, you're right. They are enhanced singular individuals. One of the things that is gonna ask the question about being human. Who is Ross? Is Ross a reality-oriented sensory system? Anybody? A robotic attorney using AI? <laughs> An android receptionist? Vote for something, just guess. Okay, the one you laughed at is who Ross is. Ross is a robotic attorney using HI, and I will show you the uh, law firms that are, are using him. The workforce of today, because Aura is here today. Who's Aura? Is Aura a driverless car? Yes, no? A room service robot? An Android receptionist? Oh, you're wrong again. It's a room service robot. I don't expect you to know these, but I expect you to know as HR person how little we know about the future. That's the purpose. So, in what year will one computer, one computer have the capacity of one human brain? Is it, I'm sorry, all human brains. Is it 2025? 2050? 2075? 2095? Okay. All human brains is 2050. One human brain is 2025. So think about what that means and what that means uh, about HR. Now, this is a, a, a national survey. How worried are you about robots and computers that can do many human jobs? How many of you are worried about that? Just a couple. Algorithms that can hire and evaluate job candidates about seven. Driverless vehicles. Oh, a lot of you, okay. Robot caregivers for older adults. Just a few, okay. That's the national poll, who's worried about what. If given the opportunity, how many of you would ride in a driverless car? Oh, okay, you're worried about them, but you're gonna ride around them, okay. Uh, use a robot caregiver. Mm, not too many. Apply for a job that used a computer program to select applicants. Okay. Be a passenger on a trip to Mars. Am I going to Mars? Oh, more of you. All right. I did this with 300 scientists, and I was stunned that only one raised his hand. And when I asked, what's the matter with the rest of you? They said, we're going to wait, see if he comes back. <laughs> and then we'll go. And he said, I've been curious all my life, so why wouldn't I go? But just so you know, those of you who want to go, the, the cost of this is quite high. So how do you see the future as HR people? Do you, how many of you think you're kind of passive, it, it'll happen, but I don't want to hear about it? Reactive, I'm going to respond when it comes. Preactive, I'm going to prepare. Okay, more. Proactive, I'm going to help create it. Okay, good, then I have the right audience here. So. Who's gonna be at work? I was asked to talk about the future of work, so I thought I'd focus on who's gonna be at work, the ever greater pervasiveness of technology. It's gonna be a combination of powerful machines and smart humans, and we're shaking hands because unless we collaborate, it's not gonna work, because they're going to be here. But this is very important. As we see the shift, here's the AI and machines are better at analysis, compliance, diligence, etc. Humans are better at Creativity, curiosity, empathy, passion, humor. So people say to me all the time, what should I do about my children who are gonna grow up in this age? This is what you should do about your children. It's nice that they're good at math, etc., but the AI will be able to do it better. So make sure they're not just screen kids living in the screen and have some of those more human qualities. So how do people come to work? 
on the one side is an AnyBot. So I'm at home, I move my AnyBot, it goes into a meeting with everybody here, you see me and in five minutes you forget I'm not there. Or I come in in a beam. Um, it's a way for people to be at work using technology without being physically there if they can't. I have to update this slide all the time. These are our Android robots. This one is the uh, only black robot that exists. Uh, so we have Android robots that are teachers at West Point. This one just this year it was the first Japanese anchorman. And the third one when I was in India was just announced as the first policewoman. And notice she's a policewoman. Because when you come into the police station and you're upset, they figured a woman would do better. Um, at dealing with people than men, so they made her a woman. But they, every week, there's a new one that comes out. I send out these trend cards, and every week I send them to people, their future trend cards. It's a statement, it's a synopsis, and then links for people to kind of get into being future fluent. There's Ross, and those are the law firms that are currently using Ross, um, and more as, as we go along. Some are even uh, creating their own Ross, but he's already here. And why is this important? If you look at UBS AG already has Alexa um, programmed with financial, being able to answer financial questions. So their financial advisors won't be necessary in the future. You just have to ask Alexa. Uh, or do we have to ask Alexa, do we have a gender pay gap if we put our information in there? So AI may replace some elite consultants and um, four smart consultants with Excel uh, is, doesn't even compare with an, one hour with a computer with AI. So think about what that means for you, what that means for HR. This one really bothers me. This is a robot helper in a hotel in Japan. Every time I see him, I arrive at midnight sometime in hotels. I do not want to see them. But I just read yesterday, this hotel closed, and I was really happy. Um, because I, I'm sure we'll see more of them, but it's not something I want to do. Uh, but we will have avatars that snap into presence in virtual learning environments. I've been in the virtual world over 10 years. I have 30 avatars. I have a different identity. My name in the virtual world is Futura Cosmos. It's not Margaret Regan. So when I speak at virtual world conferences, people come up to me and they say, Futura, how are you doing? That's who I am to them. But I can travel with my avatars anywhere in the world. I have an instant translator on. I can go to Amsterdam and speak Dutch. I can go to Japan and speak Japanese. They laugh at me, it's not so good. Um, but it's an amazing way to get to know people without having to go anywhere. So this is one of our teams because we build virtual worlds also, working together in virtual reality. This is one of my avatars in a world cafe set up that we have in Future Work Island. So you will also see a lot of snapping into presence. What does snapping into presence mean? It means that I, I become my avatar, and I can talk more about that later. The first AI machine will join a corporate board by 2026. Someone in my last audience told me they're bringing one on this year. Here is Sophia, the Saudi Arabian citizen. Um, she opened the Munich conference. She uh, was the first non-human person opening a conference uh, for the UN. The ethical question that I leave you with, should a robot be a person and be entitled to rights? Are they virtual people? We're going to have to answer those questions. HR has to be part of answering those questions. So, the ESIs, designer babies, they are here, we're in a race with China. Think about this. Mark talked about diversity. What will diversity mean if I'm enhanced and you're not? What does disability mean? What does gender mean? Because who will the executive search firms want? Who will they want in succession planning? The enhanced individuals. So think about what that means. This is called the singularity. This is the fusion of the human beings and technology. And by 2030, the third thing I want to leave you with is CRISPR. CRISPR is going to revolutionize uh, the engineering of genes. Will parents craft their children? Um, it raises questions, again, the third thing of what it means to be human as an enhanced individual, as a robot as a gene-edited individual, and the worst nightmare, and I will put it out there because it's out there, will authoritarian governments edit genes to create an underclass to serve the politically uh, elite? So those are the questions I leave you with. To be smart in the future, it will be taking our cognitive and emotional skills to a higher level. 
necessarily, not necessarily being um, analytical. And beware of AI and bias. This is thinking, AI thinking that uh, Oprah Winfrey is 76% a male. Uh, this is, they're looking at our congressmen and they match 28 members of Congress to mugshots. Uh, so not very accurate. So the question for HR, shouldn't we assess the wider impact of new HR system, AI systems by mapping out the life cycle risks? And how do we ensure an inclusive approach to design and diversity in the people who do this? And there's a crisis now with the lack of diversity in people that program AI. And so we have the sponsor of today and we have many other things here, AI and what's positive about AI, we have Idea, we have Restless Bandit, Blendor, Textio, which will tell you if your job postings uh, have a gender tone that will not attract women. And then Junko is, is a coach that will act as your coach. So to stay employed, you have to stand out. I'm leaving this as, as the last slide because I told them to skip over when we get there. Um, and if you're not prepared, be prepared, think positive and go for it.